Good evening. Welcome to Old St. Mary's Church as we celebrate the Eucharist on this, the 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. I'm Dana, and Scott and I will lead the music. The music and readings for this Mass can be found on page 1261 in the back of your hymnal, or in this week's worship aid. Feel free to follow along on your phone or device if you'd like. Just click the Sunday Worship Aid link on the front page of our parish website, oldstmarys.com. Presiding at liturgy and preaching is Father Wilson Smith. Our gathering song is number 853, A House of Prayer, number 853. Let this be a house of prayer, shelter of God's love and care, shaped into a house of living stones by the hands of Christ, our cornerstone. Let this be a house of prayer for all people. A font of God's love overflowing, let this be a house of prayer, a holy ground where all find welcome, let this be a house of prayer, a temple of the Holy Spirit, let this be a house of prayer. Let this be a house of prayer, shelter of God's love and care, shaped into a house of living stones by the hands of Christ, our cornerstone. Let this be a house of prayer. in a time of trouble let this be a house of prayer a vessel of God's grace and mercy let this be a house of prayer a hospital where wounds are treated let this be a house of be a house of prayer, shelter of God's love and care, shaped into a house of living stones, by the hands of Christ our cornerstone. Let this be a house of prayer for all people. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you guard our feet from stumbling. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you wipe the tears from our eyes. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you save us and make us whole. Lord, Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory. 
glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. For Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Say to those whose hearts are frightened, Be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication. With divine recompense, He comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leap like a stag, then the tongue of the mute will sing. Streams will burst forth in the desert and rivers in the steppe. The burning sands will become pools and the thirsty ground Springs of water. The word of the Lord. Music 
to my God while I live. Put no trust in the powerful, mere mortals in whom there is no help. Take their breath, they return to clay, and their plans that day come to nothing. They are happy who are helped by Jacob's God, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who alone made heaven and earth, the seas and all they contain. I will praise the Lord all oh my day. Music to my God while I live. Make music to my God while I live. It is the Lord who keeps faith forever, who is just to the oppressed. It is God who gives bread to the hungry. Lord who sets prisoners free. It is the Lord who gives sight to the blind, who raises up those who are bowed down. The Lord who protects the stranger and upholds the widow and orphan. I will praise the Lord all my days. Make music to my God while I live. Make music to my God while I live. It is the Lord who loves the just, but thwarts the path of the wicked. A reading from the letter of St. James. My brothers and sisters, show no partiality as you adhere to the faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ. For if a man with gold rings and fine clothes comes into your assembly, and a poor person in shabby clothes also comes in, and you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes and say, Sit here, please, while you say to the poor one, Stand there, or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil designs? Listen, my brothers and sisters. Do not God chose those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom that he promised to those who love him? The word of the Lord. Jesus proclaimed the gospel of the 
kingdom and cured every disease among the people. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Again, Jesus left the district of Tyre and went by way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee, into the district of the Decapolis. And people brought to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment and begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him off by himself away from the crowd. He put his finger into the man's ears and spitting, touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and groaned and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened. His speech impediment was removed, and he spoke plainly. He ordered them not to tell anyone, but the more he ordered them not to, the more they proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished, and they said, he has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The Gospel of the Lord. I think today we need to begin by discussing the uh, proverbial elephant in the room. Uh, we all just heard the gospel. Yes, we all just heard it. We're all thinking about it. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, put his fingers into this man's ears. Yes? He then spat. He spit, he spat. And then he touched the man's tongue with his spit hands. Even outside of a pandemic, this is disgusting. Now, it may be worth noting, this is actually not the only time he does this. Funny enough, you would think, okay, well, maybe that's a one-off. He was just having a weird day. No, he did this three times. This is one of three healings that involves Jesus' saliva. And in the next healing, in the same Gospel of Mark, he straight up spits in a guy's face, right? Perfectly normal behavior, yeah? Perfectly normal, just standard. Or is it? Uh, I, I did us all a solid. I went to the... Uh, Google search bar there, and I typed Jesus spit why, and uh, it was a recommended search. I guess I've looked this up before. Uh, and uh, anyway, I'm glad I went a little deeper into my study this time, because some sources will tell you that the Jews at that time appreciated saliva for its healing properties. Turns out that's actually not true of any major rabbinic source. The rabbis weren't saying that at the time that Jesus was alive. It wasn't until maybe even a century after that there was some sense of that in the teaching. The Romans, however, right, who occupied the territory of Jesus' life and ministry, did view saliva as medicinal. That was a much more common. Most especially the saliva of someone who has been fasting because their saliva was thought to have fewer impurities in it. A prominent example that the Roman historian Tacitus records, he was a contemporary of Jesus, records a story of the emperor Vespasian healing a blind man with his spit. The request seemed to have been made of him, especially because he was on par with God. He was a god, so how much more impure can you get? How much purer, right? No more impurities. So that's interesting. But still, the Jewish scriptures, right, and the culture of that time did not seem to hold saliva in any particular high regard. To spit at or around someone was, if anything, an insult. It was used in a manner comparable to the medieval and renaissance era to, to go, I spit on you, sir, right? It's not a good thing. Spit was considered offensive, ritually unclean, only if the person who spat was themselves ritually unclean. But still, overall, spit, disgusting, 
offensive. So this is our research, right? That's where we're at with this. And so in conclusion, why did Jesus use his spit in this healing miracle? I will offer a few words that no Paulist likes to speak from the ambo. I don't know. I don't know, right? Or perhaps to make this a collective, because no two scholars seem to agree on this either, we don't know, right? We just don't know. We're not, can't say for sure. Let's put it that way. And yet, I have to tell you, I still love it. I still love it. It's weird, and it's mysterious, and in that sense, it is deeply Catholic. <laughs> but I also think, even if we don't know every aspect of Jesus' motivation, any onlooking disciples, because he was often, often doing and saying things for his disciples to learn something, right? Anyone looking on could still learn something of how God is toward us. God does meet and heal different people in different ways. Sometimes it's a crowd. Sometimes you just got to touch his cloak. Other times it's from afar, like the centurion servant. Just say the word. He'll be healed, right? So God does meet us often in these collective ways, but he also meets us individually. And that's what we're looking at here. It seems to be a case of this individual encounter. Now, I understood this personal, individual aspect of encounter of meeting Christ many years ago, right? And I'll tell you this brief story. Uh, during a time of difficulty in my life, a time of suffering, when I was 21, I was very sick, okay? So I was in the hospital. Um, I'd been dealing with years, years of untreated mental illness, and it was all kind of coming to a head. And the whole experience to that point in the hospital was really odd. If you've been through it, you may know the routine. They took everything from my pockets. Uh, you know, uh, they spoke to you like a child sometimes, sometimes firmly, like I may not otherwise understand what was going on, otherwise gently and softly, as if I otherwise might not know what's going on, right? Others pop into your room and, and seem unsure what to say, you know, like, like you're a different person than a week ago be, be before, you know, your illness, your situation went public. Sometimes the experience makes you feel like a failed adult, or more particularly, in my case, a failed human. That's like the feeling. Who didn't have the stuff. It's like I didn't have the stuff to carry on with life like all of my peers, my graduating and job-getting peers. And it would be hard to express in this short time how alienating an experience that can be. If you've been through it, you may know, right? So after a couple of weeks, I got a pass. Freedom to leave the ward and walk around this hallway, right, in the hospital, a defined space. And that's where I saw the pastor of my church, Father Michael. Uh, he walked into the hospital there. Now, I hadn't been to Mass in a really long time. I was just kind of too sick and too involved in other things. And he didn't know me, but I knew him. So he was on his way to anoint somebody who had broken their leg. And I said, hey, Father Michael, right? So he knew as I greeted him that I must be a Catholic of some variety, right? I'm Catholic. So I greeted him, and he could tell I probably looked worse for wear. And he sat to talk to me at some length as people kind of the crowd hurriedly washed, walked by, right? We were kind of in our own little quiet space. I told him how broken I felt. I told him how failed and inhuman I felt. And in a way, even exiled from other people, uh, from everybody else's experience, from everybody else's successes, and even exiled from myself. He said some soft and really comforting words. And then he did what I had no idea you could do for a person who was mentally ill. He anointed me. Slowly, and with so much, and I do mean so much oil, that it was almost dripping off of my hands and off of my forehead. And in that moment, I, a person who felt so estranged, so apart from the rest of the world, felt once again human and connected. So I think it's a bit like that, right, for this man who receives healing today. He received the kind of healing that he needed. And in a sense, though, what's even more critical for what we're looking at in this gospel today, he received it in a manner that he needed it. That's what it was about. And in a sense, that kind of is the healing, is the closeness, the intimacy. 
So, you know, from an outsider's perspective, the spit, the saliva, kind of strange. Yes, I think we can all agree on that. But from someone like this man who may have felt apart from other people for so long and may have been treated as one of the least. So you have to remember back then, for many people, if you were ill, that was often a sign of God's disfavor. That's what they thought, right? You must, you must have done something. So Jesus, for him, is a concrete sign of this man's humanity, his connection to other people. And he's a sign that whatever is in us, that others, and maybe even ourselves, don't want anybody to go near, God does not feel the same. Whether and to what degree healing happens in this lifetime, that is honestly, that's a mystery, that is to God's own wisdom and time. But these miracles, which are really better translated as signs, point to these bigger realities of who God is and this kind of intimate connectedness that he's interested in, and that that's what this kingdom will look like. There is no part of us that isn't holy and desired by God. There's no part of us that God is not happy to join with and claim as his beloved own, even and especially when we don't feel it. Should the spit on a man's tongue not be sufficient evidence, let us receive in a few moments his body and his blood. Let us now stand to profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. In the sacrament of baptism, we were commissioned to proclaim the good news. We now turn to God in prayer for those in need. That the church will continue to proclaim the gospel of peace and reconciliation, and that world leaders will work for justice, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who live with physical disabilities will know the presence of Christ through the caring ministry of others, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. By the labor of men and women you govern and guide to perfection the work of creation. Give all people work that enhances their human dignity and hear the cries of those whose labor is exploited, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. As our Jewish brothers and sisters prepare to celebrate Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, keep them in your love and may the New Year bring joy, happiness, and peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Be with those who have suffered the devastation of storm, fire, flood, and earthquake. Protect all who have come to their aid, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Watch over all who have been forced to flee their homeland and provide them a place of refuge and safety to make a new beginning, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick will know healing, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That all those who have died, especially Patricia Dacumas, 
will soon be gathered at the banquet feast of heaven, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions we hold in silence, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear the prayer of your people, O God of mercy. Open the ears of those who have forgotten your message of love and compassion. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. As always, friends, we thank you so much for your financial support of our ministry here at Old St. Mary's. Those of you joining us from home, you can mail in your contributions to the parish office or simply go to oldstmary's.com and click on the Give button. Thank you again, friends, for your generosity. Thank you. Please join us in singing number 771, There is a Longing, number 771. There is a longing in our hearts, O Lord, for you to reveal yourself to us. There is a longing in our hearts for love we only find in you, our God. For justice, for freedom, for mercy, hear our prayer. In sorrow, in grief, be near, hear our prayer, O oh God. There is a longing in our hearts, O oh Lord, for you to reveal yourself to us. There is a longing in our hearts for love we only find in you, our God. For wisdom, for courage, for comfort, hear our prayer. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and in heart, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too exalt you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lived and reigned forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other some sign of peace. Ah. Uh. 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Grant us Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join us in singing number 1041, now in this banquet, number 1041. Love. 
Let us pray. Grant that you're faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who live and reign forever and ever. Uh, we just wanted to take a moment to uh, talk about the Paulist Fathers. Hope for the Future campaign is all going. We just wanted to say thank you so much to all who have pledged to that capital campaign. Uh, if you've not already received a letter from the president of the Paulist Fathers, Eric Andrews, please do let the office or Father Brad know so we can get one of those out to you. And just thank you again so much for your support of our community. Uh, Sunday faith formation classes are beginning next Sunday, so they're coming right up. Uh, so please pick up a copy of today's bulletin for information on how to register for that and to see all the other activities going on here at Old St. Mary's. My friends, the Lord be with you. Amen. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Please join us in singing number 757, Amazing Grace, number 757. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. to 